AMT's 1977 Coca-Cola Edition 40 Conoline 150 Van. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, Model Car Garage. Welcome back once again, model car builders and Coca-Cola fans. Today we're going to be taking a look at another great model kit in this Coca-Cola series by AMT. And that is our 1977 Ford Econoline 150 van. Coca-Cola edition. Now this model kit is really cool as we will see with a lot of great, great items inside like a Coca-Cola vending machine and boxes of bottles and whatnot and multiple decal combinations to make your own special Coca-Cola van. So before we begin, I'm just going to put this down and grab myself one of these. I will not bow to any sponsor. <laughs> okay, wait, I don't know. <laughs> I wish Coke was sponsoring this channel, but who knows? Anyway, if you like this channel, hey, let's give a lot of likes for this video so maybe Coca-Cola will discover it. Give me 18 billion likes on this video. Phone up 18 billion of your friends and just go, hey, like this thing, even if you don't. <laughs> anyway, check us out on our web store at www.monster-hobbies.ca to see what kind of new model kits like these Coca-Cola ones we might have in stock and available for you to get online. And if you'd like a discount there, don't forget to type in the uh, coupon code YouTube at the checkout and that'll give you 10% off your next Monster Hobbies purchase. Wouldn't that be great? Yes, it would. So without further ado, let's go down to our bench now and open up the lid on this great model kit. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1977 where we get to see this amazing Coca-Cola Ford van. Now this thing is really cool. And hey, guess what everybody? I'm coming to you live from Christmas 2020 where I got this as a wonderful gift from Mr. Santa Claus. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna take off the wrapping here. This is a cool model. It says you can see there on the cellophane, it says includes two bottle crates and a vending machine. So I'll put that off to the side for now. I'm doing this review because I really want to see what's in here myself. <laughs> so taking a look at the side of the box, we got the nice Coca-Cola decals that they show on here. All the little license plates, which we're going to see up close pretty soon. There's the white version of the van with the red lettering. And then on the end of the box again. And then over here, we've got this cool Coca-Cola bottles, much like the 41 Plymouth reviewed earlier. Ready to build vending machine with colorful decals. So there it is there. That's a 70s type machine. I actually looked this up on the internet. I'll show a real picture of this. And there's the real one. So here's our model kit one. And then we've got our nice pad printed red line tires. Now I don't know if the red line tires are actually available in 77 kind of hard to know. I know they're more early 60s style. The bottom of the box here actually shows the parts, trees and all that. So let's just turn her around here and take the lid off just to see how this is all packed inside. So here we have the instructions. I, I cheated a little bit. These were on the bottom. <laughs> anyway, there's our chrome in a nice bag, which is great from RC2. Here's the body and the interior all together in another nice bag. Excellent stuff. We got our pad printed tires and the red tail lamps in a bag. And then there's our glass, front window, rear window, and of course the side windows. Then here we've got, oops. Oh, that's a big vending machine as well as our engine and it looks like the spare tire on the back. Here's, oh, the front of the vending machine, two portholes, as well as the crates with the bottles. And then what do we got here? There's our opening hood in this thing. Really cool, our Ford frame and our seats and all of that. Big firewall, big dashboard. Now this is Christmas 2020. I don't know when this video is gonna get you're actually going to see this maybe in a year or two from this point. There's our decal sheet, the mystery. 
yeah, you might not see this for a year or two because currently I'm starting my 20 or my 1971 series and this is 77 so think about that how far in the future I'm looking forward to <laughs> and you guys are just seeing this now you know I'm in the past so anyway there's our model so I'll just take this box and move it right out of the way and then we'll take a look at our instruction sheet and here we have our Coca-Cola 1977 Ford delivery van instruction sheets and of course, important here, before you begin to assemble your model, study the instructions carefully, and it'll help you familiarize yourself and all that kind of great stuff. We also have French down here telling you the same thing. And if we just zoom our camera back, we can unfold our instructions. These are very much like the old ones from the 70s. Instruction sheet, that is. And here we can see our Ford engine block getting together here. There's your air cleaner, your carburetor, some of the vents from your air cleaner going on here. There's your valve cover and the breather with the hose on the end. Ford valve covers, the nice blue oval in here, cylinder heads. There's our engine block with the automatic transmission as well in two halves. We've got our timing chain cover, our oil filter, distributor at the front, which is important because when the hood opens, you want your distributor up front so you can get at it. There's the intake manifold, the radiator hose upper. You get left and right uh, exhaust manifolds here. Your oil pan fan with the belts and a chrome alternator, which is always good. Panel 2 shows our undercarriage. There's the chassis with our springs, a nice full frame in here with cross members. And of course our fuel cell. And we've got our exhaust manifold, or pipe going on here, hooking up to those exhaust manifolds. Uh, yeah, these little back ends here, which go on your frame, springs, and two-piece differential. Looking at panel three, we've got our front going together here with our shock absorbers. We have our springs and front end assemblies here, as well as our drive shaft. And there are disc brakes on the front. All that goes together, we've got our steering col column in here, pardon me, and then our front fender innards, as well as our master cylinder here and the heater going on, and our engine will pop in into the frame and everything in this step. Panel 5 is showing the completion of our undercarriage with our wheels and tires going together on the rims. And here we have, this goes in first, and then there's a retainer here, and then our tire and our wheel. We've got our front firewall with the battery and uh, water bottles as well as a radiator cap in here. And then drive shaft hooking up into our engine as well as a chrome rear bumper. Panel 6 shows our bucket seats going in together here. So there's this is a nice multi-piece here. We've got our front bucket as well as the seat back. Then we have the armrest goes on the side. It all mounts onto this nice little uh, frame here. This course you could, I do believe, spin the seats out to help you get in easier. We've got these nice little covers going up here. There's our dashboard, a CB radio, which is optional, very 70s item, which might actually be good on this van since uh, you'd have to contact Coke, you know, as you're driving around del delivering Coke uh, <laughs> bottles and whatnot. So you want to be in contact with head base. There's our steering column with, of course, the shifter for the automatic and the nice steering wheel up here. And then in step seven, we've got the glass going up inside our body here, as well as the paint for all the side marker lights and all the rest. The little bar that we need to remove in this step. And then our rear window and rear tail lights. And of course, you want to paint the, uh, the van body here before you glue all that together. And panel 8 finishes off our van. We've got our hood here with a nice high Ford lettering, our grill, which is chrome, and then our front chrome bumper with a license plate, and then our chrome mirrors off the side. It says there's extra parts included in the kit. And if we just move this up at the end of our instruction sheet here is, of course, our paint colors. These you can all match with the Tester's Square Bottle paints. And they also give you like interior, exterior colors. 
and semi-gloss and whatnot. They tell you what the exterior colors are in here and the interior colors down there in, I do believe, both English and French. Now if we zoom back on our instruction sheet, we can see our cabinet here for our vending machine, which it shows to paint the front portion white and the back portion red, and then the panel on the front and the clear here. It would be kind of neat to have a light in the back. I'm not sure if they had it. There's a decal that will go inside here before you put the glass on the top, as well as some decals on the lower front zone here. And then we have our two cases of Coca-Cola. Then if we just move the instruction sheet over, you can see the other great cars that are available. Cars and trucks. Actually, pretty much all delivery trucks on this. There's our 53 Ford, which I have reviewed on this channel earlier on. Take a look at it. Uh, the 55 Chevy Cameo. The 1940 Willys Dragster. And the 40 Ford Delivery. So, folding this all up, that completes our look at the 1977 Ford Coca-Cola instructions. And now let's take a look at our plastic components. Now our first piece, of course, is the body, and this is really nice for 1977 Ford Econoline 150 van. As you can see, there's some great detail going on here. We've got the vents that are, you know, just in front of the hood, the windshield wipers, of course. This little brace here has to be sawn out later on in the steps. And there's nice ribs on the roof. And if we just turn this over, you can see the nice slab-sided van body style. There, of course, are the door handles. Nice detail on the Econoline 150 uh, script here. We've got our rear and front turn signals on there. Turning this up, of course, we can see the nice air vent down here as well as the openness for the grill to be put in. Then on this side, of course, there's our fuel cap down along the side. There is no side door here, of course, because of the fuel cap. And then onto the back, we've got a nice sunken in area for our license plate. The hinges look pretty accurate. And then we have our area for our tail lamps. There is a bit of flash on here, which again, you'd have to sand down a bit just to get the shape right. Uh, now, turning this over, one thing about this kit, keep in mind this kit came out in the 70s, probably 1977. Um, there are a lot of mold marks on this kit. In fact, there's eight of them up underneath here. So, using your number 16 hobby blade, you should be able to get in and scrape these down. There's also the manufacturer mark up in the roof here from round two. But again, if you paint inside, it's easy to paint this over, so I wouldn't worry too much about sanding that out. But again, overall, this fan body looks pretty accurate. Next up, we have our interior panels here, which of course includes the floor and our inner wheel wells. There's the little spout here for our fuel that would be coming in off the side. There's our inner door panels and of course the center con console. Pardon me. Now, I had a friend that actually, their parents owned one of these vans back in the 70s. They had a company called Comox in uh, North Vancouver. A geological company, I do believe. And there is some nice panel detail in here, but as you can see, it is pretty lightweight. Now, one thing about this, the top looks really nice. But as you turn it over, you can see a lot of mold marks again, which is kind of a hallmark of this kit. And a lot of flash. So again, in here, number 16 blade, you might want to use it in there, just so because it can get in between. There's mold marks under there too, so number, again, the same knife. Uh, you might be able to get away with filing this one down. Uh, definitely you can hit that easily with uh, some sandpaper. They've even got the little bit here where that latch would swing around to suck in the door on the one side. So nice and accurate, but again, suffers from flash and mold marks, but keep in mind this mold came out in pretty much 1977 for real. 
Here we have two parts trees that are basically one major component, which of course is our engine and transmission. So as you can see here, we've got our block and our transmission hooked together. This is an automatic, of course. We've got our distributor, our oil filter here, our carburetor, our air cleaner, and our belts and pulleys. And over on this tree, we have these nice valve covers with Ford, the blue oval on there as well as our battery. This is a bit of more of a modern battery for um, the vintage, because normally we see like the ones with little posts and then all the little uh, dots, which are for each of the fuel cells to fill up. This one has the triple caps. And then there's our oil pan with our starter motor, our intake manifold, our cylinder heads, our exhaust manifolds, our timing cover, and this five bladed fan. So now, looking at these up close, of course, keep in mind this mold came out in the 70s. So as you can see, there is detail on here. Uh, some people might call it a bit soft. It's sort of hard to tell, I guess. Underneath looks pretty good. Mold marks don't seem to be too much of a problem on this part tree. But looking at the others, of course, yeah, you can see the detail is there. It's not quite the most uh, crisp or whatever you want to call it, but it would look good all together. Now I do have an instruction sheet that says to use Ford, or sorry, not Ford, but uh, Testers 1111 blue for this engine block, which would be the dark blue. But again, you know, it would look nice. There used to be Model Master Ford engine blue, which you could also use in here. There's quite a bit going on in our second parts tree. Here we have our dashboard, which is very typical of this era of Ford. There's our radiator and rad support. You can see this is quite a tall radiator. So again, a lot of these vans had big engines. There was multiple choice in them. There's our drive shaft, our blower motor for our heater. There's our front suspensions with the springs, coil springs on there. Shock absorbers front and rear, there's the disc brakes, and radiator hose for the engine, steering column. I'm not quite sure what these guys are called. I'm a little bit late at night here on Christmas, of course. <laughs> so everybody kept me busy all day, but that's all right. Um, can't really dump the family and go, hey, I'm going to record for, you know, however many hours. So these are like eight arm supports that go off of these. Anyway, there's the front of our van with the remainder of the inner fender aprons and a bit of the firewall going on. Our differential in two pieces and these heavy-duty rear springs, as well as our steering column and our front steering linkage and the upper or lower radiator hose. One of the radiator hoses anyway. Oh, actually, this is the uh, breather from the um, cylinder heads. Oh, sorry, the valve covers. Pardon me. It's been that kind of day. <laughs> now, Flipping this over, we come into Moldmark City. There's two there, two on the back of the dashboard, two on the top of the differential, one on the blower back here, uh, two on each of the brake drums, two or four on these arms. Uh, you know, they're everywhere. They're on the tops of the differential. Now, keep in mind, one of these is a drain plug. So, uh, but anyway, it's it's pretty bad. There's a lot of wires in here, which is nice. Again, mold marks you've got to take care of. Mold marks on the spring, mold marks underneath the steering column and all the rest. But again, keep in mind, this came out in 77. And back then, they weren't too precise in the molds. Now, round two, probably should have cleaned this up a bit to get rid of them. But again, those mold marks are also there to help the plastic get injected in spots and to help it from like having sinkholes and whatever. And actually, if you look, there aren't any sinkholes on this. So, minus some old marks, if they're keeping away the sinkholes, they've done a good job on it, actually. Next up, we have our frame, which is quite nice, actually. You need to cut it off here, and then here's another piece of it on the end. And there's some more of these cross supports. There's our exhaust manifold, and then our wheel backs. And there is a part on here... That's one of the, it's molded in a weird way. It's almost like if you blink twice, you'll miss it, you know. But right here is our brake master cylinder with a 
uh, thing on here for our brake booster. This plugs into the brake booster. But the way it's molded on here, it's almost like it's part of this sprue, like some weird thing, you know, like squashed out. So that's what I mean. If you blink, you'll miss it. So anyway, let's just move these out of the way for right now. Concentrate on this nice frame. See, it's a full perimeter frame, just like a real truck or van would have. Again, um, not too bad on this side. There are some little circles in here. I do think that's actually supposed to be there. But if you turn it over, here's we're back into Mold Mark City. There's some going on here for our motor mount and cross member for our suspension. More back here, more on there, more on, more, more. So again, number 16 hobby blade, or even because these are up top, you could sand them off. Remember to sand them and make sure they don't interfere with the undercarriage. And speaking of undercarriage, here we have it here. And again, if you turn it over, you'll notice these four big pegs. Now, those, of course, would go with two in there and two in those holes up front. So again, this all drops together. Good thing it's not a snap together. That would just be fatal right now. <laughs> click, click. Uh-oh. Okay, yeah, and you can see where you cut it off here to meet with the end of the chassis pan. Yeah, and you can see all the mold marks actually do detract from this quite a bit. But there's our body. And as you can see here, this should all, well, it's going to fall down, of course, but it will all fit together nicely in underneath our body. Okay, now taking the frame out and getting rid of our body here. Just let's move this right up top. You can see here's more of our cross braces. And again, mold mark buttons all on the top of here. Now, you got to be careful on this, I think, because some of these buttons, like, whoops, Probably these two and those two would go on the frame somewhere, whereas the other two in the back are just buttons. So, you know, make sure you kind of test fit all this first before you start sanding them off. There's our exhaust manifold, or sorry, exhaust pipe, and it's got sink, a sink mark there and a mold mark there. And then see what I mean if you look at it now. Well, don't know how well you can see it, but if you look at it this way, you can see the master cylinder with the cap on the top as well. But again, it's very flat and it's one of those, you know, if you blink, you're going to miss it. And then finally, we've got our wheel backs here. You can see the nice detail on them. Again, very basic, but they do need a cleanup just to get it all nice and together. But there it is. Oh, and I just noticed something here. There are some sink marks on the frame, so you can easily use some kind of filler in there and then just sand, cross sand to get it all nice and flat along that edge and uh, you'll have a nice looking frame and all these other parts. Our next white parts tree has our seats, our seat backs, the retainers for our wheels, our license plates, the hood. Um, these are for the seats on the bases those bits, our armrests for the seats, the inner little boxes, as well as our fuel cell here. I think these are cross braces. This is the master cylinder part for our brake booster, or the booster for our master cylinder, <laughs> one of the two. And there's our steering wheel. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of flash in here. So again, it'll need to be cleaned up. I do like the big heavy Ford letters across the hood. I know they're very basic. But uh, like the 40 or 49 Ford had big Ford written on it and all that. I kind of like that in a way. Uh, sort of a bit better than the regular Ford emblems. There's nice detail on the seat textures, as you can hear. I know it's hard to see white uh, plastic on there. Anyway, uh, there's our basis. But again, look at mold mark, mold mark, mold mark, mold mark, mold mark. And they're really pronounced because they use this mold release agent that's kind of dark. Again, if you want to get rid of mold release agents, always scrub this with warm soapy water. Should be able to get rid of them all. 
But again, I mean, there's so many mold marks on here. But yeah, you're really going to have to sand it down to make it look nice. But the nice part is with the mold marks, they're high. There's a lot of plastic in them. So it's not much of a big deal to correct it. There is a little blurb in the instructions that says do not use the extra pieces. But there are these extra pieces included in the van. And this van model over the past has been used in a lot of different ways with a lot of different things in it. Issued all these different, uh, you know, versions and whatnot. So in case you're wondering, this is what it boils down to. This little thing here is a swing out gate for the spare tire to mount on. We have two different types of antennas for the CB. And we have this nice luggage rack up here. And there's our CB radio with the little microphone right there. So that's what these components are. There's a little bit of a wrinkle effect on here. So this is a canvas wheel cover. The rest of it is sort of, again, softly molded. There's a little pin there, which of course lines up with the hole here. Overall, not too bad. Again, flash and mold marks is an issue. But, you know, a little bit of care and this thing will look just perfect. Next, we get into my favorite part of the all the car parts trees, which of course is the chrome, because in the future, everything is chrome. <laughs> anyway, here's our nice 1977 Ford grill with the single headlights. These are all molded in place, so you could use a little bit of tint in here just to get a little definition on it. The nice thing is the headlights are accurate. You know, you're not going to glue in a separate lens and get it crooked with, of course, the lights on the headlights go north and south and east and west, not at 45 degree angles. So again, this is the nice part about that. A little bit of black wash in here using like Nuln oil from Citadel would work nicely. I love these wheels. I, I do believe they're... Um, might have been used earlier than 77, not too sure, but they do look nice. Got to clean up the flash on there. These funny looking loop things are actually the side mirrors. There's our front and rear bumpers. Again, nice work. There's a little thing here. Oh, that would be your chrome alternator. Let's just bring this up into the lens. And again, keeping in mind this came out in 77, that does look like a nice grill for it. There's our wheels, which are hollow, like cut through. So those are always nice. Turning it over. There's our mirrors. You can see how kind of cool they are. A long rod in here. I'm not sure if that that might need to be cut off. <laughs> I have to look at it again. Again, you can see mold marks in here, so you can remove them with your number 16 hobby blade. Could paint inside here black or even just silver. Which would be kind of nice. Back of the grill paint that black so looking at the model up underneath you won't notice it but again very nice work on that chrome part tree next up we have our clear components now this is sort of an interesting thing i noticed about some of the 70s windows uh, for model kits and i think this is when they started to use individual glass instead of the glass with the long runners on them and they all have these little funny mold marks. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, like just on the edges of all the glass. The uh, 1975, I believe it is, AMC Gremlin also has these little dots everywhere. So if you don't glue these on properly, there might be a chance you see the dots along the window frames. And weirdly enough, there's one dead center in the rear window. Oh, I don't think this will matter because the doors in the back open, so there's probably the bar in between here for uh, the doors. Like what I mean is this. So that dot might be in dead center in between the doors here, so it may not actually matter that that's there. But still, it's kind of like, you know, you think they'd be able to mold a flat piece of glass, you know. Anyway, there's our tail lamps as well, which do have the nice little reflective bit in there. Oh, they also have mold marks right in the dead center. But on this side, you can see sort of the nice bits in there, the reflective bit. And of course, one in the center here, I think, is painted white, or maybe the bottom one, for your backup lenses. 
again, have to do your research on that. Which, unfortunately, I didn't do in this video, but still. No, anyway. Uh, yeah, it looks good. These were in a bag, so again, there's no scratches on them. So have fun with your clear components. Next up, we have these nice red line tires, which are, they call it tampo printing, where a big machine basically goes and stamps the red on there. These are nondescript tires, so they don't say Firestone or Goodyear or anything like that. They are nice and squishy, hollow inside. There is a very nice, uh, pretty much accurate tread on pattern on here. Don't know how well you can see it in that reflection. But again, very nice. You could also flip them to the black wall side if you want uh, sort of a real basic looking truck. I'm not really sure with the red line tires. I need your help out there in internet land. But I thought they kind of came out in maybe, let's say, 1964, 65-ish. I didn't think they actually came this far into the 70s, like 1977. I thought they kind of stopped doing the red line tires, maybe say, like 1969, maybe early 70, at 72 at the latest, but not like 77. So if you guys know if these came out, they kept the red lines going in that time. I'm not talking like special collector's tires that are reproducing earlier stuff. I mean like full factory production tires. Were red lines still going on in 77 or did... Uh, did AMT just do this sort of for to make it look nice with the Coke truck? You know, because one of them is white, the other is red. You know, it does look nice. It's a nice tire. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, finally, we've got some really nice Coca-Cola components in here. And we'll get into our decal sheet next, which, of course, will show our nice Coca-Cola decals. And uh, anyway, what we have is two cases of Coke, which are very similar to the ones that came in the 41 Coca-Cola Plymouth kit, which you can see in this video up here. And then here we have our front glass and the buttons. And these are actually porthole windows or portal, porthole or port dull. Anyway, windows that would go on the side of the van body if you're doing a custom. The only problem with that, like some of these earlier kits on the body here, they had all kinds of cool side windows, but if you actually look inside the kit, there's nothing like an indentation where you could cut it out from this side sort of thing, pop it out, and then you got like the perfect hole for the portal windows going on there that sink in with the thing and, you know, that kind of stuff. There's really nothing there. So I don't know if you're <laughs> just supposed to glue them on the side and hope for the best or, or what, or try to figure out a pattern to cut them in. It's kind of one of those difficult things. So let me know how, if you guys built this in the past and use those windows or any of these weird windows on any earlier vans, how did you do it? Did you countersink them in or just glue them right on the side? Anyway, uh, here's the cabinet. And as you can see, it's pretty tall and deep. I did compare this to some of the figure kits that I have. And basically the figure's feet are here and their head is up here. So the cabinet is basically the size of a full figure for 25th, 24th scale. And then here's our front door for the cabinet. There's where you would pull your pop out. Here's where the Coca-Cola logo goes. There's all the little buttons and controls Oh, for your coins and whatnot. This does fit really nicely together here to give you the full cabinet. This is a 70s style Coke machine for sure. It would be interesting to see if someone hinged this, the front door, and then build all the mechanism in here for your coin returns and where the Cokes pop out and the, the light wires coming off the back for the light and all that stuff. That would be interesting to see. Someone doing a diorama of the uh, Coca-Cola guy actually filling this. But anyway, again, nice detail on here uh, on the glass bottles along the sides. You would put those Coca-Cola decals that uh, were for the casing. So again, or for the crate, sorry. So again, very nice work on the Coke components. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. Here's our decal sheet with this nice yellow protective paper. And if we remove this, we get to see our nice Coca-Cola decals. 
And now down in this section here, we have, of course, ones for a vending machine, which has the giant Enjoy Coca-Cola logo on the front face, as well as these two that go on the side. I do believe these are for the coins. And then here's our buttons on the actual vending machine, and you do get a choice of having it all say Coca-Cola on all six buttons. There is the orange one here. There's the grape ones as well, and then the fizzy up green. Now, it's interesting to me that they use generic names on the other buttons down here, yet they use Coca-Cola. Now, all these would, of course, be Coca-Cola licensed product, like 7-Up, uh, whatever the grape one is. I think, is it C plus grape? Uh, I'm not really sitting in the pop aisle, so I don't really totally know. And then, of course, the orange one, which might be Fanta. I, I'm not sure what Coca-Cola holds, but it's funny they didn't use the licensing for these buttons, yet they Coke freely gave it for Coca-Cola itself. Odd, right? These long ones here in red and yellow are for the crates that go on the bottles. Now, there is enough to actually do um, the, crate, the two crates included in red or yellow, so... I don't know, it's it, kind of cool. You would have these yellow ones left over if you don't use the reds. There's also these ones here, I guess. Not sure where they'd go. Now, for all you kids that were born around Generation X era, you know, 1965 to 1980, you'd remember all these kind of commercials they had back in the day, watching them as little kids. I'd like to buy the world a Coke. Remember the song? Actually... I'll leave a link to that video up here if you want to hear it, if you're new, if you're millennial or something, <laughs> or, you know, just for nostalgia. Coke, the real thing, that, of course, was back in 77 as a slogan. You do have your choice of enjoy Coca-Cola in white or red, which you would use this on the red truck, or van, pardon me, and this one on the white one. Be interesting to paint this silver as well. Too bad it didn't say enjoy diet Coca-Cola. I don't know if the diet thing was really popular back then or starting up. Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, have a good day and Coke, it's a real thing with these logos. Now here we have some pretty cool license plates. The blue Coke van ones that are here, they're from California. Then over here, these, it says Coke van. Here, CV6467, that one is from Georgia. We actually have two license plates from Georgia. We'll get into that. Then here we have Tennessee TA0067. These are actually like commercial style van license plates. This little black one here is Arizona 64CM97. Pardon me. And then we've got licensed Coca-Cola license plates there and there. So you get a choice of red or white. Then here we've got Michigan plates. These are sort of like... Uh, the 1976 style, EMZ018. These are actually plates that are also included in the American Motors cars. So if you wanted to save those for like a, a gremlin or whatever. Now, this one here is Wisconsin. This is RLTHNG, the real thing. Coca-Cola, it's the real thing. Okay, and then those are, of course, the ones coming down. And then here we have, again, from Georgia, it says, Enjoy. Enjoy Coca-Cola. So, again, you can see the nice coloration and detail in here. I know my screen looks a little bit kind of pink. See the nice license plates and whatever. Again, very cool, and you could use these on a multiple of different vans. And that completes our look at our AMT 1977 Ford Econoline Coke van. And if you've built this model kit before, let us know how you liked it down in the comment section below. And you can also share with us your pictures of your 1977 Ford Coke van on our Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video of the unboxing of the 1977 Ford Econoline 150 van. Coca-Cola edition by AMT. And if you like these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound this notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And if you'd like to see our current available model kits, 
Don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Sign up for our newsletter there so that when we do some new sales and whatnot, you get to get in on those right away. And don't forget to enter in the coupon code YouTube to save 10% off your next Monster Hobbies purchase. And until next time, everybody, enjoy your Cokes and happy model building. <laughs>